The Sun's Role on Earth Only a few of the ways the Sun interacts with the Earth will be mentioned in this video. Source of Heat The Sun is the Earth's primary source of energy. Without it the Earth will be a freezing world. Source of Life Plants and plankton uses the Sun's energy to grow and produce food and oxygen. On land, plants make out the base of all life and in the ocean plankton makes out the base of most of the life forms in the ocean. However, there are a few life forms that live from the energy produced by underwater volcanoes. Source of Climate Change With Earth's current tectonic plate setup, small changes in solar activity triggers many ice ages and warm periods. During high solar cycles, we had the medieval warm period and our latest global warming period. During low solar cycles, we had the mini ice age and possibly within a few years, the new mini ice age. Long extended periods of low solar activity can lead to full blown ice ages once the Earth's air and surface beaters drop low enough to set off a cascading series of cooling events. Contributing source of clouds Not only does the sun evaporate water on the surface to create water vapor, the solar particles which interacts with the upper atmosphere create small negatively charged particles which attracts the positively charged water vapor creating, creating clouds protected against galactic radiation. <coughs> the solar wind protects the Earth from galactic radiation. The stronger the solar wind, the less galactic radiation entered the Earth's upper atmosphere. And the weaker the solar wind, the more galactic radiation entered the Earth's upper atmosphere. If there was no solar wind, we would have been bombarded by massive amounts of galactic radiation on a daily basis. <coughs> Source of Water the solar wind mostly consists of hydrogen, one half of the element we know as water. During Earth's younger days, some of the hydrogen contained within the solar wind was captured by Earth's gravity and magnetosphere. High temperatures in the Earth's upper atmosphere, volcanic eruptions, meteorites burning up in Earth's atmosphere, and asteroid impacts literally set Earth's oxygen-rich atmosphere on fire and created most of the water we found on Earth today. Source of Natural Electromagnetic Pulse Naturally occurring electromagnetic pulses on Earth is created in two ways. When strands of Earth's magnetosphere snaps, an electrical shock wave is created which can knock out electrical grids, drop aeroplanes, and in worst case scenarios, wipe out or corrupt electronic memory storage devices and damage motor vehicle transmissions. <coughs> when a supervolcano erupt, the friction between the dust and the ash particles can create electromagnetic pulses stopping vehicles and other transport trying to flee the oncoming wave of super hot ash and pyrocrastic flows. This magnetosphere can snap in two ways. One way is during magnetic pole shift. Some of the magnetic fields may get tangled and break. Another way ironically uses the same method. But this time, it's magnetic fields on the sun which gets tangled and snaps, sending a coronal oil mass ejection towards Earth. This impact from the coronal oil mass ejection can snap strands of Earth's magnetic field. The more strands snap, snaps, the larger the electromagnetic pulse. Contributing source to Earth's protective magnetic field. <coughs> the sun's wind 
The solar wind positive charged energy is absorbed by the Earth's poles, or in the case of a magnetic reversal, all areas from which the magnetic fields enter the Earth's crust, so-called holes. This energy is transferred to the Earth's transferred to the Earth's core, adding energy to the Earth's magnetic field. <coughs> The sun, however, does not power Earth's core, but adds energy into the system. Earth's magnetic field is primarily powered by friction, created by the solid core rubbing against the semi-liquid surrounding it. Two types of energy flows are generated by this friction. <coughs> Static electricity, which powers the magnetosphere, and electrical charged heated rock which flows to Earth's crust in gigantic streams creating what is known as hot spots on Earth's surface. Examples of these hot spots are Y which would be underwater if it was not for the hot spot bending Earth's crust. Yellowstone supervolcano system which has a magma chamber which stretches from Yellowstone National Park to Washington State. Iceland, which was built by volcanic eruptions and the Ethiopian volcanic system, which is ripping Africa in two, contributing to volcanic activity. The sun contributes to volcanic activity in four ways. During low solar cycle, the Earth <coughs> cools down, leading to more snow and ice. Expanding sea ice helps volcanoes which has enough magma in their magma pool to erupt since water expands when it freezes, pushing the magma out like a pimple. Increased weight from growing glaciers results in glacier rebound. The sinking land pushes magma down underneath the ice sheet and up under volcanic systems, ultimately leading to volcanic eruptions and more global cooling. <coughs> the Earth's core as magnetic due to the friction with the surrounding molten rock. The rock itself also becomes magnetized due to this friction. The heat generated by this friction overpower the magnetic fields and flows in gigantic streams up to the hot spots around the world. The sun solar wind adds energy to the system like electrical wire adds energy to electron magnet. During high solar periods more energy is added, <coughs> slowing down the escaping molten rock with increased magnetic fields. During low solar activity, <coughs> less energy is added, allowing the molten rock to escape the magnetic fields more easily. That is, the way, that is why we have recorded so many volcanic er eruptions during the Little Ice Age and why volcanic activity has increased since 2010. In fact, since 2010, only the strong flow of magma from the core created volcanic eruptions in two ways. One, the hotspot volcanic systems become more likely to erupt and pressure on the tectonic plates eventually leads to subduction volcanoes to erupt, contributing to triggering earthquakes. <coughs> earthquakes are produced in a large number of factors, some of which include post-glacier rebound, glacier rebound, magma movement, crust collapse, water acting as lubricant, tectonic plate movement, explosive volcanic eruptions, gravitational forces, meet asteroid to meteorite impacts, very large atmospheric energy releases, rock type, 
temperature increase or decrease and magnetic energy <coughs> the sun contributes to earthquakes in seven ways the solar wind is similar to electrical wire a, an electrical wire <coughs> transport electrons while the solar wind transports protons like an electrical wire wire interacts with magnets, the solar wind interacts with magnetically charged crust. Positively charged areas are pushed down while negatively charged areas are pulled up. Crustal areas which are already under pressure may release their built up pressure during strong coronal walls. Solar driven wind periods due to an increase of pressure. The sun is the major source of energy <coughs> to Earth's triggering glacier and post glacier periods, which leads to earthquakes by method of weight redistribution on the planet. The sun is the largest object in our solar system, and its gravitation or gravity prevents Earth from drifting aimlessly through space. The sun's gravitational effect can be seen on Earth during spring tide, when the sun and the moon align and pull the ocean water up from the surface towards the moon and sun. Conjunction. <coughs> this alignment is not strong enough to create an earthquake, but adds pressure to existing pressure points which may result in an earthquake. These earthquakes normally occur within a 20 day span, 10 days before the alignment and 10 days after the alignment, depending on the amount of pressure needed to push the pressure point over the edge. Planetary alignment also adds to gravitational earthquakes, the gravitational earthquake count in the same way as the alignment of the Sun, Moon and Earth. But these effects are a lot weaker without help from the Moon. And as a result, earthquake upticks do not always occur within the 20 day time span. The Sun is the primary heat supplier to Earth. A decrease in heat can lead to rocks shrinking in physical size leading to areas already under pressure to slip or an increase in heat can lead to rock expanding adding to pressure between fault lines the sun provides additional energy to the earth's core during strong solar wind events normally experienced during high solar activity slowing down the magma flow from the earth's core towards hot spots on the Earth's surface. During weak solar wind events, normally during low solar activity, the magma from the Earth's center to the Earth's hot spots increase in speed, assisting in the filling of magma pools and subsequent volcanic eruptions, which triggers earthquakes. <coughs> The sun provides additional energy to the Earth's core during strong solar wind events, normally experienced during high solar activity. Slowing down magma flow from the Earth's core towards hot spots on the Earth's surface during weak solar activity. <coughs> the magma from the Earth's center to the Earth's hot spots increase in speed, placing more pressure on tectonic plates, drifting above, eventually leading to more earthquakes.